The Arsenal of Freedom. While investigating the disappearance of the USS Drake on the planet Minos, the crew battles floating mechanical death spheres. They're not spheres, though. Well, I just want to point out this episode has Vincent Schiavelli. I remember him as the guy with the monkey from Batman Returns. Yes. He's a very distinctive looking actor. The USS Drake disappeared near the planet Minos, so the Enterprise goes in to investigate. Minos is known for being weapon merchants, even on both sides of the same conflict. The Enterprise picks up a communication signal, and it turns out to be a holographic salesman advertising the weapons that are made on the planet. If you're going to make a holographic salesman, don't make it look like that guy. <laughs> He's not somebody that I would feel comfortable buying something from if he was a real person. It almost feels like he's telling you that you're being swindled. So lock on to my signal and beam on down. Because we don't just provide weapons. Shut that off. We provide... They say there's no life signs down there at all, so everyone must be dead. And then they're going to send down a couple of way teams to try and figure out what happened, instead of some kind of probe. The danger of this particular situation, where everybody could have been killed by a disease. Yeah, let's send down our first officer instead. The sets are improving a little bit. At least we have some trees in this one. At least they're trying. There's some fog, although it's probably a piece of equipment malfunctioning and it's really smoke. <laughs> So they go down to the plant to check it out, and the captain of the Drake was Riker's buddy. So they find him, or they think they find him. It's really just the weapon system. Trying to get his guard down by creating an image of somebody that he trusts that can get information from him. The weapons capabilities and defensive capabilities of the Enterprise. And it does a really crappy job. It might as well have been the narrator from Gauntlet Legends. I should have known you'd pop up. Welcome. Me? Forget about me. What about you? No word, no message, nothing. Red Warrior. There are two others. Where's the Drake? Where's your crew? They get attacked by these weird drones that manage to put Riker into a stasis field. It's the stupidest design, and that's why Picard and Beverly head down to the planet to see if they can help Riker. And they tell Data to get him out of it. He says it's going to take a while because we're only ten minutes into this episode. <laughs> So the captain, the first officer, the chief of security, third in command, and the ship's doctor are all down on this planet at the same time. The entire command structure of the ship, basically. Which leaves Geordi in charge. Another drone comes and starts to attack. So Picard grabs Beverly and they run away and then they do a very comical fall into a big hole. Picard does a good flip, though, on the way down. Crap, make wall disappear. Oh! So they wake up in the bottom of this pit, and Beverly's leg is broken. But Picard doesn't find out about the leg injury at first. He just leaves her buried in all the sand and tries to put a tourniquet on her arm. So back up above, another drone attacks, and it's smarter than the last one. Tasha calls Data over, and they both have to destroy it. So up on the bridge, Jordy is now the one in charge. They're being fired on by something that they can't pick up on their scanners. Current chief engineer, Logan, comes up to the bridge and he immediately starts questioning Jordy's position, even though he was assigned that current position by Picard. But Logan wants to be in charge and he's Kaczynski number three now. So Jordy decides to analyze the firing pattern of the thing they can't see and trying to anticipate where it's going to show up next. Which is pretty smart. Jordy's a smart guy. Smarter than Logan. But he's not going to get his own movie. <laughs> But he's taking a gambit. I only hope this rogue action works out. They should have tried using a giant magneto against the weapons to disable them. It's a colossus of a storm, man. Only an angel could save them at this point. That weapon system is a real juggernaut. If they're not careful, all that weapons fire is going to cause an avalanche. The mystique of this planet is really causing them a lot of strife. Those drone sentinels are really hard to beat. You couldn't even do it with a whole cage full of saber tooths. Even Riker, as much of a beast as he is, couldn't handle those drones. Those drones are wreaking havoc down there. They need to get to the computer that's the real mastermind behind everything. Riker better get out of that shield if he ever expects to get his mojo back. But right now he's on a downward spiral. Yeah, it's a real long shot that they can never escape. I only hope they can take their broken ideas and morph it into some kind of plan. The laser that drone was firing was a real dazzler. And that salesman. Oh man, what a maggot. When Picard fell, I bet he felt some vertigo. When Picard fell down that hole, he screamed like a banshee. The away team should have set themselves up in a defensive phalanx. But when it's all figured out and they get back 
back up and save everyone, they're going to have a real jubilee out there. The onslaught from those drones was really difficult to survive. Maybe they can find the cable for the whole weapon system, and then they'll just turn the ship towards the North Star and get out of there. Card and Beverly were lucky they didn't fall into an endless abyss. All I know is they're in danger. Maybe it was a bad idea to send a multiple man team down to the planet. If they can get rid of one of the drones, it might be a domino effect. I wonder if all those drones were created from the same master mold. And that thing that's firing at him, it might as well be a mirage or some kind of magic with a K. <laughs> <laughs> So Picard and Beverly are still down below, and he's trying to figure out a way to get out of there. And the Enterprise is still being fired on. Geordi's really starting to second-guess himself. He seemingly gives command of the ship over to Logan, but then Geordi reveals that they're going to split the ship, and they're going to take the battle bridge back to fight and get the saucer section of all the civilians away. Which again raises the question of why they even have those civilians on the ship in the first place. So Picard down below finds the computer, which controls the whole weapon system, and he activates the salesman. And that scene reminded me of the uh, the time machine, the 2000s version. He's talking to the hologram of Orlando Jones, who's telling him about the history of what happened. I believe what was once one race is now two. One above and one below. Picard's talking to the salesmen. All the drones that are firing on the Enterprise and the away team are all part of the weapons demonstration. So Picard finally agrees to purchase the weapon system in order to get it to stop. There is one point where they're looking at a monitor and it shows the drone circling around the away team and the way that arrow is moving around the screen, there's no way that thing was moving like that. I saw it. And I know Riker's a square, but they literally portray him as a square. <laughs> And then up above, Geordi decides to take their part of the ship into the atmosphere, which will cause whatever's shooting at them to be visible when it enters the atmosphere, too. The Arsenal of Freedom. It sounds like a USO movie from World War II. Things happened, but none of it really feels like it matters that much. The only potentially interesting thing in the long run was getting a little bit of Beverly's backstory, but we didn't get very much, and nothing came of it in this episode. It wasn't a bad episode, it wasn't a boring episode, but it wasn't a particularly good episode either. I would give it a C+. I probably wouldn't even go that high. General, open and close, artificial risk, bunch of faux tension. It's not an episode I would recommend for someone to watch. I'd give it a C-. That's true, I, I'm gonna drop down to a C.